This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream and Nebula, and will be a little bit different, for reasons I'll address at the end. Perhaps more than most people, I spend a fair bit of time thinking about climate change. It's a subject that I've made more than a few videos about. Making videos about climate change isn't easy. Partly, of course, because of the scientific and societal complexity, but also because it's so relentlessly negative. Talking time and time again about the nature of the problem, how scientists have understood it in increasing clarity for decades, and how still not enough is being done to address it, and the increasingly dire consequences of that inaction. Many people look at how society is responding to climate change and fall into despair or doomerism, but I'm not one of them. I fully expect there are many people in the comments section who would disagree with me. There always are, and long may that continue. But I don't feel hopeless when I look at climate change. That's not to say that I feel hopeful, but I find there are reasons to not despair. So in this video, I'd like to share them with you. Maybe they'll keep hope for the future alive in you, too. Firstly, the fact that climate change is a cumulative problem. The more fossil fuels we burn, the more carbon we extract from the Earth's crust and put into its atmosphere, where it stays, on human timescales anyway. The more carbon that builds up there, the more energy is trapped in the Earth system, and the warmer the planet gets, on average. We have already caused warming that cannot be undone, and the more carbon we add in the future, the warmer we will get. But look at it from a different perspective. There is literally no point at which reducing emissions of carbon will not make a positive difference. We can always stop making the problem worse. Yes, there are feedback cycles in the atmosphere, including some that are irreversible on human timescales, that could take a small forcing from human emissions and make a much larger impact, rendering small reductions in emissions pointless. But I've seen nothing in the literature that convinces me we have passed, or will likely pass, a threshold whereby runaway warming is inevitable. So any action taken to reduce greenhouse gas emissions will make the future better. While we have already caused a certain level of warming and are committed to a level more, I see any action we take as a win. Even if that action is too slow to prevent one and a half or two degrees of warming this century, it will still help avoid the truly apocalyptic outcomes. It's basically never too late to make a difference, and even slow change is still positive change for future generations. Secondly, look at how many people are calling for action on climate issues. Groups like Fridays for Future and Extinction Rebellion, regardless of how you feel about their methods, are loudly making climate change an issue, and over the course of two decades have transformed public priorities on climate. To be clear, I'm not saying that as a society we are currently doing enough to prevent devastating climate change this century. We're absolutely not. What I'm saying is that people care about the problem now, and specifically care a lot more than they did relatively recently. The upward trajectory is an incredibly promising sign, and the necessary precondition to sufficient action. And action is ramping up on an individual scale, with more people changing their diets and flying less, and more importantly, on a governmental scale. In democratic states, climate policy is becoming more ambitious and effective. And to stave off the inevitable comments, in the most important undemocratic state, no, not you, China, climate policy has been hugely expanded recently, with China now the world leading producer of electricity through renewable means. Of course, however, they are still extremely dependent on coal power, and that's probably not going to change anytime soon. But again, the overall trajectory is positive, and their policies are nothing if not ambitious. It may be late, but thanks to the tireless, brave efforts of activists, people around the world are finally getting the message. And that message is being translated into action. And lastly, and most importantly, money. Money can be exchanged for goods and services. We may kid ourselves into thinking that us humans act morally or philosophically when it comes to big issues like climate change. But historically, that's not been the case. The Atlantic slave trade and commercial whaling, for example, were morally abhorrent, but ultimately only ceased when they ceased to be economically viable. I know it was more complicated than that, don't at me. I'm making a point that economics is really important. So here's the good news. For a little while now, 
it's made economic sense to fight climate change. That's partially because the cost of inaction is now estimated to be so high, higher than any plans are to combat climate change, but more so because the cost of new renewable electricity generation is now lower than the cost of maintaining existing coal-fired power plants. To me, this is the single biggest cause for hope. Because there's no morality here, there's no value judgement, just cold economic sense. The long arc of history bends towards economic efficiency, and that's now on the side of reducing carbon emissions from electricity generation, which combined with the electrification of other sectors like transport and heating, we may have just passed the tipping point in this fight. Of course, you may have listened to all of this and thought, wow, that was a lethal dose of copium. But hear me out. Perhaps I'm being naive or optimistic, or even in denial about how serious this problem is. But consider the alternative. If we simply give up, as I should stress the science tells us we shouldn't, then what happens? As soon as we lose hope, we stop taking action. We consign ourselves to living in a worse world. And we are in a rough situation, I want to be very clear about that. But it is not a situation without hope. And the longer I can keep that hope alive, justifiably at this point, the more good I, and via this YouTube channel, we can do. So while it may not be easy all the time, I don't give in to climate despair, and neither should you. The trajectory of climate action is upwards. Technology and economics are on our side, and any action, even if it's not as much as we scientists would like to see, is still benefiting our descendants. We can still make the changes necessary to avoid one and a half and two degrees of warming as a society, and I will keep advocating for those changes. But as I said at the beginning, I'm not hopeful. But also, I'm not hopeless. Hope is important because it allows us to imagine a new, better future. A future with different, better healthcare, cities, food, even music. This is all the subject of the series Dream the Future, narrated by Sigourney Weaver, available on CuriosityStream, who have kindly sponsored this video. CuriosityStream is the number one source of professional productions on topics from climate change to natural history, technology to goats? They have thousands of documentaries and shorts that make you better informed about the world and make dinner time a place of learning rather than just rewatching Brooklyn Nine-Nine again. If however you prefer something a little bit more indie, something with more of a homespun, personal touch, then look no further than Nebula, the streaming service with over half a million paying users created by YouTubers like me who wanted independence from, well, YouTube. Nebula is a platform that we own, allowing us total creative freedom, and has a totally different business model. We don't like ads, so Nebula has none of them on its pages or in its videos. Instead, it's a subscription-based service, with your money funding exclusive original content like China Actually by Polymatter, as well as directly supporting the creators on the platform. But why have I told you about these two services? Because you can get both of them in a bundle. Signing up at curiositystream.com slash Simon Clark, you can get access to CuriosityStream and Nebula and get a 26% discount. Just $14 $79 a year for the best documentaries on the internet and financing exciting new educational video content online. That's curiositystream.com slash Simon Clark to improve your viewing experience online and support this channel. Thank you for watching. You may have noticed that you didn't see me at all this video, and that's because Pixel Girl and I are currently between houses. We're living out of boxes for two weeks until we move into our first home that we own together. Hence why no set and no camera, just a microphone and a somewhat slimmed down script that I hope was still interesting and in this case maybe even inspiring. Next week I'll be putting out a video to mark this huge life event and to thank this community for making it all possible. Until then, there's some videos you can watch on the screen right now. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you and you'll see me in the next one.